I want to be working in the mountains and uh, sort of progressing in that fashion. So Plaza Bren is the National Mountain Centre, that's the place where everybody sort of aspires to be. If I wouldn't be here, I'd be at uni, which would be three years away anyway. So it makes sense to do it quite a long, like a long course and do it all in one chunk and then work up from there. Um, well, I lived in the Falkland Islands for two years and uh, it really got me into the outdoors and like hiking and climbing and everything with my family and my parents. So this kind of thing as a career is exactly what appeals to me. Everything that we're working towards, I mean, working towards a few basic, well, well, the sort of first rungs on the ladder sort of thing to being an outdoor instructor. So, mountain leader, particularly this week, because we're doing our training. So, the basic skills for that, that you kind of have an idea, oh, I'd, I'd just carry somebody off the mountain. Well, actually, no, that's a really bad idea. And once you've got it all laid out and worked and you've talked it through and then see a couple of potential options, um, it gets you thinking about the actual practicalities and how you then go out and get that experience for yourself. So, they just kind of lay a framework for you, but get you thinking in a positive fashion about it as being a leader. As soon as I start getting cold, what happens when I start getting cold? Your mind starts yeah. going. You're, You're not as good as... I'm not as good as I should be, should yeah? Be, yeah? So that's why, you know, thinking back to what you have for breakfast as a mountain leader, what you have for lunch, how you keep yourself hydrated, is massively important, massively, because that's what helps you think properly. Yeah, and think straight. If you're tired, if you're knackered, if you're dehydrated and hungry, you're not going to be able to perform at your best. We're starting to learn about the foliage and natural stuff, extra information to pass on to people, and then you've got all of the rope work. We've done all of our first aid recently, so it's a lot of stuff to take in all at once, but it's really good. I'm really enjoying it. It's a good way to get a lot of courses quite quickly, so I can sort of stack them up while I'm young and then go on from there, try and work my way up to MIC, MIA sort of stuff. I can't get this loop over that tree, can I? Yeah. I'm going to put it a long way down. I love having a camera watching me do it. It makes me, do, it make, it makes me tie, tie a knot and get it right first time. How does that work? Just follow the, uh, follow the line of the lock backwards. Follow the line of the lock backwards. Through the hole. Around there? Is that right? Yeah. I'd always do it on the top because otherwise I get confused. Around there. Yeah, you can do whatever makes you remember. Yeah. 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 Okay. All I want you to do then is we dismantle this one and I want you to pair up. I'm going to take it off the bottom step. Put it in. Yeah, but need to be in a straight line. Oh, okay, then the bottom step. Have you done this before, Hannah? Yes. Yeah. Nope. Right. I think this is what we're doing tomorrow. I imagine so. Yeah, and exactly like you would do with a belay flight. Okay. Exactly like that, yeah. Get your hands together. So get your feet dug in, feet out in front of you, come forward so that that goes a little bit tighter on you. Because if that's not tight, if it's... I'd love to be an outdoor sports instructor, just generally being outdoors, preferably climbing. I'd like to do some more stuff abroad, but definitely outdoors. I don't want a desk job. So guys, when you've got a rucksack on, that takes all this pressure off of here. Yeah, and there's more friction, so it's actually harder to pay the rope out. This man can, can, can uh, take the Hold main the course and then he's in charge and he says when we step sideways. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. All right. So hold on to me. So you're in charge. Step sideways. Step sideways. Okay. What happened step. then? When he said step, what do we do? We all, we all naturally yeah, lift one leg up at the same time, which means we're all off balance. Wow. So it's going to be, he's going to step. I'm going to step. He's going to step. Yeah, sweet. Two little. Because then I've got yeah. solid platform. Yeah. And then when, when he steps, I'm kind of supporting him. Yeah. Okay? 
the biggest person will be I taking the brunt of it. Happen. Yeah, okay. we face Goodbye, upstream. Yeah. We always face upstream for for two reasons. One is he can see what's coming. Two, if I turn that way, I've got a ton of water trying to buckle my leg. Can't see what's coming, and I can't see what's coming. We did a mock one on a much smaller scale the other day when we went on an expedition. Nothing quite this big. So, a bit. It looks freezing. Three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one. Go. Break off! Ready to go! Three! Oh. Four! Five! Oh, so much water in my boots! <laughs> I wouldn't I wouldn't try, I'd plan a route around that. I would not want to go and do that again. Especially in the middle of January, just after a big snowfall. It's not pleasant. How, how cold would you say that was? Cold. <gasps> Getting on for minus 15? 20. No. <laughs> <laughs> I did it at the back to start with, did it at the front at the end. I felt safer at the back. I could see if it was faster running river, you at the front just gonna get beaten up. You need a pole really to wedge it in to stop you getting brunt, like, taking the brunt really. The wedge, the wedge is the most solid because you know it's a triangle, isn't it? Most I quite like the strongest pole. shape. On there. If you're on your own, just the pole. The pole, yeah. Well, the wedge because you could trip over a bit and, and still sort of get your re rebalance yourself on everybody else. Yeah. They've done good today. The conditions for summer mountain leader training are pretty pretty harsh uh, they've done good wading around in the water here and, and learning from experience is, is the best thing you know so we better get busy yeah. really, yeah. technically right. right so situation you've just done what six point what uh, How many? 6k 6k so from where to where from here we come back up from here and then I was thinking if we go up this you know not very steep bit I don't drive a car I only ride a motorbike so if I go to Scotland, for example, which is like my favourite place in the whole world, I have to go on the train and have to go backpacking wherever I go to, even if it's hiking into a, a, an organised campsite and staying there for a few days to explore the mountains. Um, you've always got to have a load of routes planned out, penned out. You can't just sort of turn up and go, right, I've got a week, I'm just going to sort of wander about. You've got to be, if I wanted to visit a place 40 kilometres away from my start point, I'd have to walk there. So I've got to get it all sorted out and penned out. So yeah, quite a bit of experience. Always feel comfortable sorting it out. But for this, I think this is going to be a nice route, and I'd like, I'd like to go and do it actually now. I yeah. think if we, if it doesn't get chosen for the end of the the, the mountain in the training, yeah, we could just it would be good to just off. go and do it. Yeah, just go and see how how nice it is. A few nice tops, not too high, but you know enough high points to make it exciting. Yeah, should be good. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Bit of everything, please. Bacon sausage, hash brown, fried egg. That's my preferred style. Bit of bit of scrambled egg as well coming up. That's the way forward. Loving the camera right now, aren't you? Bit of bean, yeah. Certainly in the morning. And that's it. Ready to roll. In my bag I've got crampons, extra layers to keep me warm when we're standing around, a bit of rock climbing stuff because we're doing some rope work, lunch, and then just the normal survival stuff that we keep in there all the time. So we're going to go and do some ML rope work um, and we're looking at them being able to secure it, um, give someone some security going up a little rock step and then also coming down a little rock step. And the uh, rope work we're looking at is using it very much in an emergency situation. It's not going out with the intention of going and using ropes in the mountains. It's using it for an emergency. And uh, so the simplest form of tying onto this anchor is get make yourself a big enough loop, tie an overhand knot and shove that over that rock here. Yeah? <clears throat> okay, now give that a pull down there. Just pull that in that direction, somebody. Okay. Mm. Okay, so, so the concern here is there's a bit of a thing. How can I make this rope sit on this block then? You could tie this. Tie this. 
Yeah, no, actually, the bigger the angle, often the better the rope will sit. Oh, okay. Yeah, if I tighten this up, look what happens. So you want a wider angle. So you want yeah. a nice wide angle. Otherwise it might just flick off. Otherwise it's more likely to flick off. Yeah. Okay. You need but somewhere what, what that it can sit down low on the back. Yeah, okay, so you want to keep it low. Mm. So actually, if I'm sat on the floor with this, so just pull that now at the floor level, at floor level. Give that a pull at floor level, Janet. Look at the difference. It's better. Yeah, it's much better. Yeah. So I'd be quite happy that would work at floor level. So often you're going to sit down because often you are looking at things that are at the same level as you. Anybody get the idea of spotting from above at all? Can uh, you do that effectively? You can, can do, like, yeah. yeah. That's your way of coaching someone. You can coach because you can do it and then yeah, you can coach say, them through that. Use, yeah. What we were saying was use my footsteps. So you, it, given in this situation, it's a lot easier. But you can see where I've stood yep. to try and keep your feet quite short steps but using the same footprints yeah. I have. Yeah. But the reality is, is gravity is going to take them down, isn't it? Yeah. So therefore, all you're doing is guiding them from above rather than you actually... You do that on easier ground. Rather than spotting them, aren't you? OK, wait there for two ticks. Perfect. Just keep that down so it's still on your right hand. Okay. Oh, camera. Yeah. That <laughs> OK. So that, that, um... Right hand doesn't hold anything else but slides up and down that rope, but it doesn't grip the other rope. The other hand can hold both ropes, and then you'll not get that wrong. It was good, really good. It was nice to get out and practice some interesting skills, some emergency stuff. It makes you feel a bit more prepared for what might go on. You've got a few little one of the instructors said the other day, you can have a rucksack full of experience. And that's literally, it's the little techniques you can just tuck away for when you need them. But it's nice to see, like a lot of that, you read books about it and you see people doing it. Actually to have a crack at it with some peers, it's really handy. And also, um, our instructor today is a new guy that we'd not met before. I think he's a mountain guide, British mountain guide, which is like the pinnacle. And uh, he had an awesome style, you know, it's relaxed and just sort of laying it out for what it was. Very, uh, as a theme with all of the stuff that we've done so far, actually, none of it's like classroom-esque. We're sort of talking through it and then having a go at it and a few little pointers here and there. And it's, and it's done, so nice relaxed place to learn some new skills. So, yeah, awesome, good little day. Looking forward to expedition, though. It's been a good breakfast is on, brews down, bags packed, crampons just about fit in my boots. Ready for expedition. Um, they're talking tomorrow about the maximum winds being suddenly 45 miles an hour. Minus one in the valleys are going plus two, but staying minus one at 900 metres. So the freezing level at the surface at first, lifting in the afternoon to around 700 metres. Uh, Saturday, a less cold day than of late. The dry at first with some brightness, but further outbreaks of rain arriving around midday. Any lying snow is likely to start melting a little. The freezing level around the summits at first, but soon going above the summits. We've not been told where we're going to go yet, and um, I think it's going to be quite low down, but quite undulating terrain, so there could be quite a lot of snow and the little dips and dells and that sort of thing. It's going to be intrepid. That's the word, that's the key word. So, picking up, picking up there at two. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Are we going to yeah. go in one so if, I, if we aim for a pick up at two, that's fine. And they'll be quite to there, being out at night, having been out at night, having and stuff. It, just staying alive in the cold. So, so that's our aim. Is, wait, wait, so, we're going to get lots of normal, get the logo, go over connect today, camp probably down there or down here somewhere, and then the next day, head over to. Good after the first slope, feeling feeling strong, feeling comfortable. It's going to be a, going to be an interesting day. It's not just a man manning up physical day. It's going to be interesting learning intelligence. Mm -hmm. First ridge, yeah. nice. Which yeah. suggests it's a good start to the day. Good um, up till now. It's nice to get the first bit right. out of the way. Ready? If you have any issues with the pace or anything, let us know. Or if you think we're uh, going completely the wrong way, also shout us up about that as well. Okay. Any stoppages, let us know.
We are navigating off to a fixed point. Our, uh, our team leader, Simon, has uh, set us a target that we've got to reach. So we've got to navigate up there. We've set ourselves a, a timing that we think how long it's going to take us to get there. Um, just worked out a few features on the map that we're going to try and pass by on the way to tick off to uh, sort of chart our progress, if you like, and then hopefully get there without any mishaps. <laughs> This is the problem you have an assessment if you turn up with map case. I'd really recommend not using a map case. Yeah, they're useful at points, but um, on assessment, just come up with a laminated map and then yeah. that one, you won't get confused. Yeah, but no, it's, they're trying to get assessment maps. Which we're on the flat bed, yeah. Yeah, we're yeah. on the flat bed, yeah. yeah. We're on the flat bed, yeah. So where's, where's, yeah. The, where's that dot? That dot is different over there. Okay, so we're forward to that. We'll be out of here by 9 o'clock, but this morning my boots are frozen solid, so the lace is broken, I tried to put them on. So, I've got to try and patch that up. Yeah. See you later. Looking forward to getting home, but no, thoroughly enjoyed this. Last night I stood in a bit of a bog and uh, sunk up to my knees and Helen was warning me about frostbite. So that was a bit interesting. So, because my feet were just frozen. My boots, when I got them on this morning, had frozen solid. So I had to sort of pour hot water on them to defrost them a bit in my tent. But no, it was really good camp. Great fun. Lovely bunch of A bit of a weird experience that I had was just coming back down this way. Uh, I kind of fell into a bog, nearly lost my shoe under a sheet of ice. Nearly lost my flask as well, which wasn't good. But now I've got a pond for a left foot. It's not too pleasant. They found, I think they found it quite tough. I mean, it was properly winter conditions up there. Um, it was quite cold last night. Uh, we were wading through snow for most of it. So, yeah, no, not your normal summer ML conditions but they they did well they did really well and um, got stuck in and got on with it yeah so I think it was a good experience for them and the amount of opportunities that you can get out of this course including the actual experience of working at Plassey Brennan is a massive step forward in this kind of industry I think after this course there's they lots of them try and go out and, and get work and they can work in uh, outdoor education centers they can work at the sort of adventure holiday industry they could go and work as trekking leaders kayaking instructors climbing instructor there's a massive variety of work they can do out there or they can go on to to get in other qualifications in other places they can come back and get further training when they need it but the best thing for them to do after this is go out and get experience in the workplace 